When the world was young, Australia was isolated by ocean from all the other lands. Because of this, over tens of millions of years, the plants and animals here developed in unique ways, creating a land filled with the weirdest, most wondrous creatures. Even after the first humans arrived more than 60,000 years ago, we all lived in harmony together, no one taking too much, even the humans. But that began to change a couple of hundred years ago, all in the blink of an eye, really. Australia has an abysmal record of species extinction. More mammals have become extinct in Australia over the last 200 years than in any other country in the world. Many other species which live in Australia's forests and woodlands are now in severe decline. This is particularly the case with most of the 300 Australian mammals and birds that use tree hollows to nest and find shelter. Hollows only form in trees older than about 120 years. Destruction of habitat in old trees has got to stop if we want these species to survive into the future. The Threatened Species Conservation Act lists 80 animals and 300 plant species in danger of extinction in New South Wales. You humans never think of anyone but yourself. You think you own the bloody place. Spotted-tailed quolls, also known as tiger quolls, are the second largest marsupial carnivore in the world. They're solitary, mostly nocturnal animals, very agile, both up in the trees and on the forest floor, where they hunt for other animals, preferring medium-sized mammals. A fierce hunter, the tiger quoll can bring down a wallaby three times its own size. Of the four quoll species originally found in New South Wales, the tiger quoll is the only one remaining. The principal threats to their survival are clearing of native vegetation and logging. You've heard of a kangaroo court? Well, this is a quail court, and it's much, much worse. Who, who, who do you think you are? We were here long before you got here, and look at what you've done to us. What you've done to the bush. You've wrecked the joint. Marsh owls are amongst the largest and the most powerful owls in Australia. They mate for life and nest in tree hollows. The male prepares a nest with decaying debris and they raise one or two young each year which learn to fly when they're about three months old. The principal threat to the survival of the masked owl our clearing of natural vegetation and the loss of large old trees and the nesting hollows they provide. You're just one strand in the web of life, not the spider in the middle. Wake up to yourself, you arrogant fool! Look at you, you poor mangy mongrel. You got no fur, you got no feathers, you can't fly, you can barely even swim or run. I think you're so smart with your opposable thumbs and overdeveloped frontal lobes. You humans have had it your own way for far too long. You guys, what's going on? How's a glider supposed to get any sleep with all the noise you're making? Respect, dudes. Respect. Yellow-bellied gliders are the world's most vocal marsupial. Their high-pitched shrieks and throaty rattles can often be heard at night as they forage for tree sap, nectar, honeydew, manna and occasionally insects.
They're the most proficient gliders in Australia, able to glide 144 metres from tree to tree in a single bound. They live in tall, mature, eucalypt forests. The yellow-bellied glider is very sensitive to forest disturbance. often vacating an area when logging first begins. New carnivores are so aggressive and unevolved. Relax! Oh yeah, that's right, Glider. We're so unevolved, we're endangered. I overheard a human talking about it. We're all endangered. Endangered? What's endangered? I've never heard of it. Has it got anything to do with important stuff like gliding from tree to tree or yummy sap or sweet nectar to eat? No. Endangered means that we're almost extinct. Stink? I do not stink. No, no. Extinction means that we and all our relatives will disappear from the earth forever. Kaput. Gone. Day bones. No more of us. Worse than death. Extinction is the end of birth. We all die. Sure, but extinction means that none of our kind will be born anymore. No more young tiger claws or mast owls. No more yellow-bellied gliders. Ever. And it's all because of bloody humans like this one we've caught. How could humans do that? They couldn't climb up my tree if they tried. And if they did, I'd just glide to another one and they'd never catch me. They cut trees down, you food-obsessed flying carpet. They cut whole bloody forests down. They could never cut my tree down, Wallaby Breath. It's far too big. Just chill out. Focusing on negativity only feeds the negative. Look, all our trees are fine, so I'm out of here. Why don't you two get some sleep? You useless sack of meat, I'd eat ya. You didn't smell so bad. You narrow-minded, uptight, soul-serving uprights. So many of our brothers and sisters have already gone. Eastern Hare Wallaby, Lesser Bilby, Tasmanian Tiger, gone. Paradise Parrot, Long-Tailed Hopping Mouse, extinct. Norfolk Island Kaka, White Galenur, never to be seen again on this earth. We heard it from the Lyrebird, who heard it from a chainsaw. Our friend Brooding Frog is extinct, and we are in danger of the same. In danger? You think you've got problems? The gastric brooding frog was discovered in 1973. It was last sighted 10 years later, and it's now presumed to be extinct. There's worse things than being endangered, you know. It's the only animal ever described which converts its stomach into a womb. <coughs> After she lays her eggs, the female turns off her gastric juices and swallows her eggs, protecting her young inside her stomach and not eating until they're born out of her mouth six or seven weeks later. What I wouldn't give to be endangered again. Oh, those were the days. <coughs> You too, Linga Drongo. I've been here for millions of years and now you little Johnny come latelys move in and ruin everything. I don't know why they let you off the ship. Why don't you swim back to where you came from? Hi guys. I know what you mean. My family's been shot at, stuffed, made into hats and purses, squashed flat by their cars, torn to bits by their dogs, and many of the gum trees we need for our food have been cut down. It's stressed us out so much we've got sick, and many of us are going blind. We're a national symbol for the humans, yet we're in danger of extinction. Koalas live in forests and woodland, and spend most of their days sleeping in the trees. They only become active at night when they go to forage. They feed on eucalyptus or gum leaves, preferring large trees from only a few select species in any area. They very rarely drink water as they get all the liquid they need from these leaves. 
They usually only have one young weighing less than half a gram when it's born. Among the principal threats to the survival of koalas are the clearing of native vegetation and logging. The pale-skinned humans have already driven so many species to extinction. We've got to do something about this. We've got to wake them up. Only thing is, you've got the wrong human. This is one of the good ones, one of our friends. A good human? Oh yeah, right. Sure. There's no such thing. They disappeared long ago. I've never heard of one. The only good human's a dead one. No, no, there are good humans. Some of them are on our side, even trying to protect our homes. A few of them even realise that trees are more than just wood chips. Us koalas have worked with them for years. It all started when my grandfather, Blinky Bill, was having all these problems when they logged his forest. <laughs> Which one's boss? Which one's what? Which ones do we cut down? All of them. We're taking the lot. Since then, my family has found lots of humans ready to help us, and we've always worked alongside them. Yeah, a fat lot of good it's done. No, no, it has made a difference. They've even saved a few bits of bush. There's many koala families alive today because some humans stopped other humans destroying their homes. Anyway, there's so damn many of them that it's pointless trying to fight them all. No, we've got to work with the humans, not against them. Now let's stop wasting time. Let's do something. And please let that human go. It's my friend Aaron, and I'm sure he'll help us if you're nice to him. I'm so sorry for what my people have done to your people. Of course I'll help you, and many of my friends feel the way I do. When you need me, just come and find me, I'll help you. But right now I've got to go, I'm late for my band rehearsal. In 1998, expert panels of scientists commissioned by the New South Wales and Federal Government identified the minimum area of habitat that they considered must be protected from logging so that the core population of threatened animals could survive. For example, in northeast New South Wales alone, the scientific experts recommended inclusion of sufficient habitat in reserves for 1,224 breeding pairs of masked owls, 3,781 breeding pairs of tiger quolls, and 9,240 breeding pairs of yellow-bellied gliders. Yet less than a quarter of the minimum areas of habitat identified by those experts has since been reserved. Hey, 
Auntie. We've always had a lot of respect for each other, your mob and ours. But now our forests are fast disappearing. What should we do? Can you help us? I know, I know. But we're in danger too. Things have changed so much. We're teaching the young people, and I know they will bring change. And hang in there, no matter what. Go down there and see them. You're blind. All hands strong. Lock on, lock on. Action now, people. Come on, come on. All hands strong. Lock on, lock on. Action now, people. Come on, come on. You've got to help us. Now they're cutting down our forest. We've got to stop them. Our endangered friends are in trouble. We need your help. Can you help us? So you go to Sydney, I don't know where it comes from, down there somewhere. That's not our concern. Can you help us? They're cutting my forest down. For you all to go outside, you can protest until your heart can get outside. But you've got to remember leave the building. If you don't commit an offence. Tell them to stop. Please tell them to stop. It's my home. Where am I going to live? My tree. My poor tree. You make your point, but you've got to leave the building to do it. How would you like it if your home was being cut down? You wouldn't like it, would you? We have to go. We've had enough of a go. I'll ask you again. Nice little office you got here. Too bad if something happened to it. Gee, I wonder what happens when I press this. We can't help you here. We don't make the decisions. You'll have to go to Parliament. I'm hungry. You're always hungry. I'm hungry too. 
But we've got no time for arguments. We've got to find a politician. Wonderful to see you. Guys, this is Ian Cohen, Green representative in Parliament. At last, a politician. The politician is hardly an endangered species. Perhaps that's because many of these much distrusted creatures spend so much of their time protecting and feathering their own nests. The green plumed variety, however, as distinct from the better known left or right winged kind, is known to display a highly developed concern for the environment and other living things. Do you live in Parliament? We live in the forest and it's all being cut down. Can you help us? Well, I am. I am a member of Parliament that's here to help all the endangered species. Do you speak for the quolls of New South Wales too? Is there someone here who speaks for the quolls? I, I represent quolls and I want to save your forest. I represent all you endangered species. But unfortunately, many people in this state of New South Wales don't realise the plight that you're, that you're suffering under. That's why we've come here. We want someone to remind them about us. I will try, but you've, you've got to help me. You've got to get the message out. We'll do what we can. But can you speak to the Parliament on our behalf? Tomorrow night, in the Parliament, I'm going to make a speech on behalf of you endangered species. You tell me what to tell them. What do you want me to tell the Parliament tomorrow? something as important as threatened species. I have to say, I have, I have to say, in this, on this piece of legislation, I would not like to leave it up to them. On behalf of the endangered species of New South Wales, I'm calling on the New South Wales Government to protect additional areas of forest and woodland, including Chalundi, in national parks to avoid the extinction of the mast owl, yellow-bellied glider, spotted-tailed quoll, koala, and other endangered species. Tell them that the forests are our homes. Those species are Australians just like we are. They are losing their homes. We humans shouldn't take everything for ourselves. We should have enough of it for other species to ensure that they don't become extinct. The trees make the air we breathe. It's as simple as that. Protecting the ancient forests is for the benefit of humans as well as for the species who live in them. The forests are the lungs of our planets. They maintain the stability of climate. And what about the water? Ask them, where do you think the bloody water comes from? They protect water catchments, ensure clean drinking water, as well as protection from floods and droughts. And they contain the gene pool that holds the foods and medicines and industrial <coughs> products of the future. Tell them we're all strands in the same web of life. If you allow us to disappear, the web becomes frayed and tattered and eventually collapses. Humans will die of a great loneliness of spirit. We are all strands of the same web of life. If humans allow these creatures to disappear, the web becomes frayed and tattered. I put it to the house that without these wonderful creatures, humans will die of a great loneliness of spirit. It is the job of this parliament to protect these critical habitats and species. We know what must be done. All that is missing is the political will. Extinction. It is the choice of this house. Thank you, Madam President.
to now introduce Senator Bob Brown. And let's celebrate the wild preacher. I have, I have with me four of our threatened species. What were you thinking? It's nothing less than abomination. Four million years of evolution, diversity. There must be some solution. Down, old trees are fallen. Ancient forest homes are calling. That had a sacrilege, yellow belly white, the mast owl who, fine tail quoll, and koala too. Koala was supposed to say this, but now she's gone. We can't rely on her anymore, so it's up to us to take the lead. That means me and you. Yes, I'm talking to you, humans. You have a choice. The way this story ends is still unknown. It could be devastation and extinction you pass on to your children and your children's children, or it could be that you can wake up in the morning and smile at yourself, having hit the brakes in time to save great wild spaces of how the world used to be. Spaces where I and my friends can live out our lives and continue to evolve alongside you into the bright future. Extinction. You choose. Worldwide, more than 11,000 plant and animal species face their imminent demise. Humanity has initiated the first major extinction spasm since the end of the dinosaur epoch. If a state as wealthy as New South Wales can't find the means and the resolve to protect the native creatures entrusted in your care, what hope for the rest of the world? People of New South Wales, speak up. Demand a fair go for all species. Put the brakes on this slide to oblivion. Your descendants and all of creation will sing your praises if you do. It's not really the place for a POM to tell Australians about their wildlife. Uh, and I apologize for that. But I speak for the rest of the world, outside Australia. We know that you have, uh, in your state boundaries, some of the greatest natural treasures in the world. Fascinating and unique. If you don't look after them, nobody else will. And if they go, nothing can replace them. <laughs>